Welcome to an outside view. I'm your host, Dick Zaccaro, and joining me today is a couple friends of mine and uh, fellow activists, if you want to refer to us that, and also RTMs and other elected uh, positions in the town of Walpole. Vic Center and Tom Brown. Gentlemen, welcome to an outside view again. Thank you for having me. The topic of discussion today will be the recent town meeting held last Saturday, still on the outside football field. Why? Which, I don't know. Yeah, the state mandates uh, has been lifted. Uh, right. why, why? I mean, mass mandates, except in school, they extend them another uh, exactly. three you, months. What, anybody can walk in the town hall, no mask. Right. You can but walk for some reason, town. they continue right. to hold the event right. outside, braving the elements, particularly for some of the senior and elderly RTMs. Right. So the vote, the key vote this last town meeting was on uh, whether to go forward with the construction of a new combined middle school with the Bird School. I think it was built back in the 60s. And uh, just to let the viewers uh, be aware of the cost of this now, they estimate it's gonna cost about $115 million. And the state is gonna contribute only $37 million because of the COVID situation, state revenues are off. So once again, the remaining funding and costs will be a burden of the taxpayers over maybe the next 30 years, the life of the bond. And they estimate that each taxpayer will have their taxes increased minimum of $461, if not closer to five or over five. So we'll have to see how that plays out once they finally, if it does go through on a referendum. But interesting enough, um, the vote went down about 111 RTMs to only four, they were in favor of it, and only four was opposed to it. And it seems like every article that we saw when we were RTMs, Vic and myself, yeah. got defeated last election by design, by the way. I think they targeted a bunch of us conservative votes, even though we so. always lost by two thirds on everything. We only had one third that went our way and two thirds always went against us. But Tom is still an RTM. Uh, so maybe Tom, you can share your experiences where we were no longer RTMs, so we couldn't participate in town meeting unless we were invited to speak by a fellow RTM. Right, uh, so town meeting was, uh, was held Saturday. I was looking forward to attending, but I was unable to do that uh, due to my business and the heating and air conditioning uh, work. So I had a, an elderly couple call me and they were really upset and really nervous about the cold weather that's coming. and. I told them that I would um, come to their house Saturday morning and see what I could do about their broken heating system. So I went there and uh, I was ultimately able to, to repair the heating system. And while, she was, while I was there, the, the elderly woman came down to the basement and asked me if I knew anything about stoves. So I said, oh yeah, yeah, I can, uh, I can take a look at that. So uh, she was telling me how she was cooking porridge. That, that was the word that she used, porridge. porridge. So I said to myself, if somebody's using the word porridge, I'm definitely gonna help you out. You know Wasn't that saying? the three bears story? Yeah. That yeah. Ate the the so, baby bear and mama <laughs> bear ate the por porridge right. on so, the stove. <laughs> so, I mean, they, they, were, they were in their late 80s, the husband and wife, right? <laughs> so uh, I go upstairs and I, I asked her, I said, oh, so which one's not working? Which burner? So she showed me the burner and I, I took it apart, you know, and she was watching and then the husband came down and he was sitting at the kitchen table and he was watching and I just said, hey, do you got a, you got a paper clip or a safety pen? So she had it, she, she went and got one right away and I, you know, finagled the paper clip that, I, that she had and uh, I just cleaned out the orifice on the, uh, the, uh, and the pilot, where the uh, pilot was. Right. So I just cleaned that out and uh, put it all back together again, and then boom, it came right on. Oh, maybe you know? some of that porridge spilled and it blocked did. The, uh, yeah. the pilot. It did. She she boiled it over, and it and oh. it spilled all over the stove. So I was able to fix that for him. And the husband, he was just amazed. He was like, "How did you fix all this stuff so fast?" And I said, "Well, you know, I've been in the business like 30 years or whatever, right. you know, and uh, so I've basically seen everything, but I've never seen porridge." pour down inside a stove like this. So, uh, 
you know, everything was all put back together again. And, and the husband says to me, he goes, how much do we owe you? I goes, you know what? Today I'm going to give you the veterans discount because I noticed that you were a uh, Navy veteran. Wow. And uh, he goes, really? I goes, yeah. I goes, uh, yeah, don't worry about it. So I walked out and uh, I, didn't, I didn't charge them at all. And they were, they were so happy because right. I could tell they didn't have much. Right. That's a know? great, great story. A uh, very so, compassionate man. And but, if there was a legitimate excuse for not go to town meeting, that's one of them. Absolutely. Right. So one of the factors in my thinking about not going to town meeting was basically the two-thirds vote and how many conservatives were eliminated in the last election. So there was absolutely no way that we were going to beat a two-thirds vote at right. town meeting. So... Uh, yeah, I just said, you know what? I can go to the spring town meeting. You know? Right, right. But um, I wasn't surprised at the numbers, especially with the makeup of town meeting. Right. One needs to remember when that article passed at town meeting, and you mentioned that the uh, estimated cost of the new school was $115.7 million. Right. So if there's an added cost to the construction. They don't need to go back to the citizens of Walpole for another two and a half override. They only need to go to town meeting. Right. And town meeting, as you've just seen with that passing, 111 or 114 to four, to four right. that's what you're gonna get on cost overruns. Right. Okay, so that's what you're going to face. I mean, those are all estimates. By the way. And there's no guarantee from the state that they're going to give you or give the town $38 million. Right. The, the state is $5 billion in the red. Right. All right. Where are they going to come up with that kind of money? I mean, right. is there any, are there any other school districts in the Commonwealth that have gotten $37, $38 million for the construction of their schools? in just the last year or two. Right. You, know? you bring up a good point because a lot of the town governments uh, within the state and cities are also impacted drastically by COVID. I mean, the restaurants, a lot of them went out of business, people weren't working. And, and I'm on the uh, assessor's tax board now, one of the three members, so right. we'll be hit shortly setting the tax rates. But a lot of businesses have come forward and they're asking for abatements because right. of, of right. COVID. Right. So, I mean, I don't know where all this money's going to come from. Well, nobody's talked about the 30 to 40 percent increase in building materials. Right. Uh, you cannot get windows, doors. Right. Uh, I have a lot of friends that are in the building business, okay, and uh, the prices have gone sky high. Everything. Right. Uh, everything. Lumber, food, right. gas. Gas well, might go up to five dollars. So, so natural gas is predicted to go up 54 percent this year. That's unbelievable. What's Home going on. heating oil right now is around three dollars and eighty-five cents a gallon, right. costing more than gasoline. And home heating oil is a dirtier fuel. Yeah. It's high in sulfur. Right. All right. And it's not as refined as gasoline, but we're paying a lot more for it. It's going to go up a lot, right? Too. And it's going to go a lot more. It's it, a, it's, it's going to be a very points. dark cold winter right. as we've heard in the past from our president right predicting that maybe because he's behind it but anyway getting back to town meeting i did have the opportunity to speak uh, to a few of our friends that are still rtms a couple mm -hmm. of them are newly elected and uh, one i know voted against the project but it started off customarily like they always do right they get recommendation from FinCom, 15 members. Right, all appointed. Right, who the moderator points, good point. Right. And also, they voted unanimously for it. Then it goes to the select board. And it went through the select board 4-0 for some reason. So it looks like one select person either abstained or wasn't there to vote on it. It would mm -hmm. be interesting to find That's, out who yeah. that one select person mm -hmm. was. Yeah. Wow. But then after they recommend it favorably, then it goes to discussion. And they said it was quite an active discussion. And the advocates for the school are saying that 
the teachers and children would benefit by a new, newer environment. Now, that's, that's debatable because they spent one year on the COVID lockdown at home teaching through Zoom calls every right. day. Right. A lot of parents were pulling out their hairs, but I think all the kids passed and went on to the next grade. So right. maybe, maybe the answer is uh, education at home. You know, can I, can I just break in here for a second, guys? Sure, absolutely. Uh, the schools are 60 years old. Let me ask you a question. If you were living in a house that was 40, 50, 60, 70 years old, would you tear that house down? Only if the taxpayers would pay for it. Right. That's then I built okay. like a, a mausoleum. Right. But you can't do Taj that. Taj Mahal. <laughs> Taj Mahal. <right? laughs> you can't, you can't do casino. that. Okay. You would renovate it. Right. Okay. And that, you would yeah. renovate it for a fraction of what it would cost right. to build a new one. Right. It doesn't make any sense. If, if they're 40 to 50, 60 years old, I've been through those schools. Right. All right. I, I've gone to the tours. And some mm -hmm. of the stuff that they're saying is uh, unacceptable so easy to fix right the maintenance of the schools has been let go for years and i think if they spent 10 15 million dollars in each school they'd have two beautiful schools right Good I, point. I, just recently on on facebook social media somebody posted a bunch of pictures of the school you know and uh so being in the construction field and many of my friends are also in the construction field and they've they've viewed those same pictures so i responded to a lot of it and if you look at the pictures it's all superficial and it's yeah. horrendous workmanship okay i can't believe the town is paying contractors that leave open pipes that didn't cap them off or replace a piece of insulation or if they scuffed up the wall or a ceiling and didn't paint it, the wiring that I seen in one of those closets, the, the racking system on some of the wiring was horrendous. There's no conduit being used. It was just shabbily put there and there's like no zip ties or anything putting it all together. I mean, so I commented, I said, you know, yeah, there are some issues, but who's, t who's held responsible for this workmanship? Okay, right. uh, are we actually paying contractors to not finish a job correctly if they're taking pipes out and they're not capping them off and putting new insulation in place? Mm -hmm. It looked to me like it was staged, okay? Um, so I actually said that and people like, oh no, that wasn't staged, that wasn't staged. I said, okay, so if it wasn't staged, who do you hold accountable for that workmanship? Oh no, we can't hold anybody accountable. You know, and we're paying the bill. Why can't we hold anybody accountable for this? Right. You know, for, so um, an, an, another another uh, story that was on Facebook just, uh, well, I brought it up this morning, actually, because I was thinking about the uh, last year, and I was talking to a, a mother and her daughter here in, here in town um, on a service call, and she attends public school, right, the daughter does, and the mother was, is very knowledgeable of the goings on at the school system. So she actually showed me the letter of the, uh, the MCAS scores that have t basically tanked, okay? But on the same note, she was telling me that, you know, when the kids were doing remote learning, right, last year, there was no bullying going on. Uh, the kids were basically better protected from illnesses. They weren't, you know, in large groups. Right. And to top it off, virtually every single student was promoted to the next grade up. So my whole thought behind that is, is it proven that schools and buildings are going to be obsolete in the future? That's an excellent I mean, point. Because why don't we spend money on internet service to homes right. and outfit these kids with uh, state-of-the-art computers at home? Right. I well, mean, why can't, why can't a company come out with these uh, learning platforms 
and they and like one person could teach thousands and thousands of students online. Right. Think of the cost savings that's there. Is that where the future is going? You never know. Maybe one day they'll just have a chip they implant in your brain and all you're, of a sudden you become done. a genius. Hey, right? you never know. An Einstein. You never know. <laughs> but getting back Tesla. to town, <laughs> town meeting again on this. By, by the way, viewers out there, this isn't the be-all, end-all just because town meeting approved to go forward. Next Tuesday, November 2nd, I believe the polls are open from 8 to 8. Yeah. So um, I, brought a couple you, of, I brought a couple of yard signs. Right. Uh, this one here. Okay. Walpole, yeah, vote no on the override. Right. Um, like I said, it's all estimates. Right. All estimates. Well, the, it's, it's on a referendum for right. the all registered voters to hopefully actively participate and make your vote count. Now, historically, in the past elections, whenever there's an override, they usually fail. So this will be an interesting vote because it was promoted so heavily with a lot of people that want to see this go through, let's see what happens when the people and actually go out it's and vote on it. It's open-ended. Right. Okay. So so I, open I put there's a, no cap on it. I right. put an ad in the Hometown Weekly last week that went out to 10,000 homes. I did it again. It hit homes today, right. but w with a flyer. Right. And it has a copy of the ballot question. So if you read the ballot question, it doesn't have an amount on it. All right. right. So it's open-ended. It's open-ended. It's like an open right. checkbook. I mean, right. yeah. yeah. Especially as Vic brought up, he's in the uh, the industry as well. But all cost of goods are going up. Labor's right. going right. up. Cost of goods. The There's cost a shortage of, of supplies. Mm -hmm. Ships are waiting in port. Inflation's being up held up, coming 20, 25%. in. That drives up uh, price, supply and demand. Did you That's know the basic of economics? The, the uh, uh, town budget usually has free cash every year, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, for the last 10 years, and I have it right here. Yeah, $54.5 million? Yeah, it's right here. In okay. 10 years? In 10 right. years, okay, uh, well, you had a total of 54.4. Let's say $54,043,554. Right, right, okay. right. right. Okay. That's, a, that's a $5 million a year average, okay? Free cash. Uh, free Where's, cash. Where's that money? And that was supposed to be being saved for, for, a, school. for right. a new school. Right. Also, the stabilization fund, other reserve funds, um, they have capital surplus expenditures that were never spent in total going back to the 80s, right. that they still have millions of dollars right. in reserves. So what are they using that for? Back to like 89, for? I think it was. But yet they continue every year to go up to the full two and a half but the percent. Average, the, average, the average property taxpayer has seen almost a 6% increase in their property taxes every single year. Right because of valuation and the maximum two and a half override. Right, right. now to get on to what Dick said, okay, I believe you said that the property uh, values were gonna go up, uh, or we assess 4% more this year? Yeah, between so two and a half, the full two and a half percent, plus the added values and the increased assessments. Increased assessments. Increased yeah. assessments is good if you're selling a house. Right. If not, you're gonna pay more taxes. Right. So that, and some of the advocates for the school, Andrew Flowers, I believe, that's a member of the Finance Committee, said, I read his quote, that the new school will be good because it'll improve the values of our homes. But if you can't afford to live there anymore, what good is it? you're going to have to move. So let's uh, step back a minute. So Andrew Flowers, right, he's the what, the vice chair in the, in the Finance Committee? I believe committee? so, yeah. The vice chairman of the Finance Committee, Andrew Flowers, pays literally zero taxes in this town, all right? Hmm. People are gonna say, oh, that's mean, you can't say that. But I did, I mean, and it's true. Right. You cannot argue that point, Right. all right? He's telling us to pay more in taxes because we have such great credit here in town. Right, unlimited, right? Un unlimited checkbook account. Right. I believe you said one But time. he has no sweat Unlimited in the game. Unlimited credit card. Well, I believe funded we're, by the tax we're uh, in the red of the town uh, to the tune of like $60 million right now. Right. right. I think what we, we paid an interest, $5.5 .5 million in interest. Right. And also, town debt more than doubled right. with the building of the fire station, police station, senior center. Those buildings went all on town credit. Right. 
We you also, have an override for those three buildings. Mr. Flowers also orchestrated the move to take us all out because he, his group, what is it, Walpole? Well, what, there's a bunch what, of them. What's his that group that he represents? They have a big, big, big support. Right, but when we all together. ran for re-election, he sent out a survey, are you in favor of the new schools? Depending how he interpreted it, he right. painted us against <laughs> the schools. Right. And that's what led to most of us getting uh, beat, I believe. Listen, Possibly. we we all know that we need buildings and stuff like that. But right. the bottom line is the fiduciary responsibilities of our elected officials here in town has been in the toilet for years. Okay? Right. You know it, I know it, and I hope everybody knows it. Look at all the cost-saving ideas that we've brought to the table, like joining the state GIC and health care, right? What happened with that study? That went into the round file, right? Right. Right. I'd like to know what That's type of motions, point. what type of motions have our elected officials brought to the table, like say, uh, Glenn Maffey, for instance, when he was on uh, water and sewer. Your water and sewer rates went through the roof under him, okay? What, what cost-saving measures, measures has he ever brought to the table, along with basically all of our elected officials here in town, our, our selectmen. They, they don't. Every article right. that's for increased costs goes through, and every article that tries to reduce costs, it gives some of the taxpayers that it's unrestricted free cash that right. Vic mentioned back credited to the taxpayers so they don't have to go up the full two and a half. Let, fails, let, fails time after time after time. Let right. me just add something else, too, is um, when we talk about water and sewer. So I would have to say, Water and sewer dropped the ball again. I just recently found out that. So four, four, four years ago, I uh, had a motion on the table for an audit. By and an you, outside chaired, you chaired that. I, ch I was the water and sewer chairman for my last right. year. That was four years ago. So we had a motion on the I put a motion on the table for an audit of the indirect costs. I believe the indirect costs back then were $1.1 million that water and sewer were paying, was paying to the town to you know, manage like the billing and all that other right. costs, right? And I thought it was pretty exorbitant. So I called for an audit because it's been going on for years and years and years, okay? We had a little discussion about it, the five commissioners that were there, and it ultimately passed. So we sent that audit to Jim Johnson, okay? Jim Johnson was supposed to do that. I recently ran into um, Pat Fasanello and uh, Mr. Hassanyega and asked him, I, I, you know, this was, so I said, this was like three years ago, right? So I said, hey, what was the outcome of that operational audit that we voted on? And... Uh, you know, back like three years ago. And they basically laughed. They said, that was never done. So what does that yeah. tell you about your fiduciary responsibilities here? Right. Me, you, and you as a water and sewer rate payers, right? And everybody else, there's 8,000 water rate payers here in town. We vote for these people to represent us as rate payers. Mm -hmm. They voted to pass that operational audit, I mean, the, the audit of the indirect cost, and... Um, never happened. It never happened. They never pushed it. So, what are we to do? That just shows you what's going on here in this town. Who is right. pulling the trigger? Who's, who, who authorized Jim Johnson to not do the audit of the indirect costs right. by an outside firm. Matter of fact, I think in the next few days, I'm gonna to go to town hall and I'm gonna do a FOIA request requesting the results of that duly elected order to Jim Johnson. I wanna see what, what they say. You're right, and then accountability and transparency- There is no accountability. Is huge, and uh, matter of fact, my last guest was running for mayor in uh, the city I grew up with. I had her on as a guest to compare Brockton and Walpole, mm -hmm. how they handled COVID and the funding and accountability. That's a big uh, theme of her campaign platform. Right. She was telling me some elected officials 
acquired more land and their assessed values went down. So how do you figure that one out? That's insane. That's a study that could be done. Absolutely. It'd you know? be interesting to take a look at everyone's assessments to see. Yeah, uh, people that anyone. are elected here in town. Right. See what their assessed values are at. Yeah, and a lot of people that contributed to the former mayor's campaign received abatements and reductions in their assessments. Funny right. how that works. It's funny, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. But uh, that's a good point you brought up, too, about the state GIC and, and uh, state pension fund. Right. That could Instead have saved of being the in the millions Norfolk, and millions yeah, of dollars. And it, yeah. they, they voted. The last town meeting, <laughs> when we were active RTMs, we voted unanimously to form a committee, the right. town form a committee, and I even volunteered to be on the committee. I used to run the state pension fund, yeah. and I was Norfolk County's uh, pension fund consultant for a number of years as well. I volunteered my services. I never heard back from them, and I think it just died. It's in limbo somewhere. They have n total disregard for saving any sort of revenue here in town. They it's spend it as fast as they get it, and they want more. Here's my theory what's going to happen in the future, and I've seen this because I, on past shows I parallel the example to when I lived in Brockton. Sure. At one time, Brockton was a great city. I mean, it was the shoe capital of the United States. Um, it was called the City of Champions. Champions. They had great sports teams. Right. I graduated from Brockton High in 1971. It was the largest high school east of the Mississippi River. We had 5,000 students. It was a great education I got. What happened is they taxed people out of existence, the lower income people, the elderly people, couldn't afford to live there anymore, so they moved out in favor of bringing in government subsidized housing and they, they uh, received federal and state aid to build the housing. I'm not saying that's bad, but they replaced it with a tax base of hard working people that got up every day and worked for a living. That's right. And they, they're losing that tax base. Now the same right. thing here, the only difference is in this town and some of the smaller towns like the Sherborne and, and uh, Lincoln's and Sudbury, and they have a, a very influential, wealthy tax base, so they're not hurting for dollars. In this town, we looked at the demographics the last election, and 25% of the residents of this town are making a quarter of a million dollars or more a year. So obviously, they're not going to be impacted as much as the basic person who's making you know fifty thousand right. a year right. fifty two well, thousand it's very reflective in our turnouts here in town for elections uh right. when well, you know when you get 16 percent turnout look at the, the figure 84 oh. percent of the people just don't care right that's do that's they, astounding they, to me do they astounding. not care or are they not aware of i don't an know we, we've had this debate countless times i don't know if they're not aware that uh they're not publicizing it. They used to put signs up, go vote next Tuesday. Yeah, I haven't behind seen. The, behind the tree. Yeah, it's oh, almost no. like yeah. suppressing the vote. Yeah. Um, or are they indifferent, apathetic? Do they think that all politicians are uh, the same, corrupt? And, they, you know, I don't know what they're thinking. And that their vote doesn't matter. Or they're too busy maybe working three jobs to make ends meet. But for some reason, um, they do come out on overrides. I mean, people vote. Yeah. What I found in the past, I've been in politics for years. What I found in the past, the first most two important reasons why people vote, pocketbooks, finances, and public safety crime. So if the crime goes up and the taxes goes up, they usually get out and participate in an election. So it's going to be an interesting override. Yeah, you know, and uh, I think another thing that we probably should touch on is Walpole has reached safe harbor with 40B housing. And I think uh, Walpole uh, should take a step back and look at maybe the project in South Walpole and maybe the one at uh, Gilmore's. Uh, Gilmore's. The, the proposed Gilmore site is uh, all 40B. Right, right. Well, that's coming from the uh, president. It's his strategy and his administration believes there shouldn't be any more suburbia in the United States. No more local zoning. Right, right, right. And they want to have mixed zoning right throughout the country, everywhere, and just have like all these urban developments come in and you're going to lose the suburbs eventually. Right. But then they're going to have to start putting cows and horses in Boston. 
grazing land in Boston. That'd be interesting. Maybe on Bo Common. Boston Common, right? Well, I think like Boston years Common ago. is a designated grazing ground. Right, it is. That's right. what it was. That's what it was there for right. in the beginning. So, for the record, I'm gonna. What's your prediction is gonna happen next Tuesday? First of all, what percentage of vote and how the vote will come down on the middle school? I'd say we're, we're lucky if we get 25 percent. And how's the vote? Uh, how's the vote gonna go? I say it's gonna go down maybe by a few points. Couple They're points. gonna lose. Yeah. Tom, I'm gonna say uh, hopefully with the efforts that I've made, especially with my two huge ads in the hometown weekly hitting 10,000 homes that I've gotten the message out I'm hoping and my prediction is that it loses by a slim margin hmm. I'm gonna say interesting I, I, I think it's gonna I think it's gonna lose by maybe 200 250 votes it's gonna <laughs> lose so they'll yeah. vote no the vote no will prevail and by I, probably 200 250 votes I'd like to uh, ask some of the people that have been playing with the signs in town stop stealing them. Right. I lost six signs in the that, course, in that, the course that's of that's vandalism. Yeah. See, Theft. This is, this is a great sign here. So we got we right. we you know, we take we're taking some of the uh, some of our signs right there. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. So if anybody would like one, they could contact me. And that is that a, in Spanish as well down yes. on the bottom there. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. So I've never like seen either this sign, one or the one with the Walpole colors. Yeah. Uh, and we have them in we red have them and available. white. <laughs> we have them available if you'd like to contact me. I'm, I'm always around town. You see my truck. Right. My telephone number is on there and my email address. Um, I give you my cell phone number if you'd like one. Uh, it's 508-277-3644. Give me a call if, you, if you're interested in a sign. So you want to hear my prediction on the vote Tuesday? Yeah. Which I already voted, by the way, early voting. I went down to town hall the other day. You didn't, now, vote, now, you didn't now, vote by mail? No, okay. in person. <laughs> now, early voting has been available even before town meeting. Yeah, how did that work? So I questioned that, and it, it, it was actually a legal thing. It was, um, right. they said it's too, I called the state, uh, Secretary of State's office. So... Hmm. I would say as long as you vote in, uh, in person and show an ID. Yeah, but I mean, even though it was legal, it just doesn't seem right. Right. You know what I'm saying? So my prediction is this on Tuesday. If it's less than 50% of the voters that come out, it will pass. If it's greater than 50%, it won't pass. Now, let's say the scenario. I'm thinking 25%. If it doesn't pass, we saw the first town vote, as you recall, on the ball fields for yes. $13 million. It failed. Yes. They came back the next meeting, I believe, in the spring of the fall. Seven million. And they reduced it to $9 million. And then some but of that, the people that voted against it voted for it. Now, what do you think is going to happen here if it goes down? Out, that wasn't an override. No, that was, that was a town meeting. That right. town meeting. Right. The town but meeting. Can they come back, though? Like set another election and reduce the cost of the next town meeting? So what they're saying is this is such a, a uh, serious thing to do here that if, we, if it doesn't pass, they're going to lose the money from the state. Well, the state always gives you money towards yeah. education. Usually the state... But there's no guarantee. Right, but listen to this figure. I've seen it before when I was on a committee you know in Brockton. You know a guarantee? When they pass it in the tax bill that you get in the mail, right? That's a guarantee. Absolutely, but usually the state contributes up to eighty percent towards the cost of schools. Right. The only thing the towns, the city picks up is the transportation cost, the busing. They pay for the whole school budget. Why is the, the state. federal government but by the way, up a lot of this? Cost? But by the way, it's just a transfer of tax. So we pay right. local taxes, state tax, and federal tax. So when you get these federal grants, who do you think's paying for it? The taxpayer. Right. Oh, yeah. We're paying. We're paying because the government right. doesn't create wealth, right? No. Right. They create mm -hmm. taxes. Right. Right. So why why isn't the federal government contributing uh, for public schools? You know, we don't see any grants from the right. from the federal well, I, government. I, yeah, I think. But they, yet we could give Afghanistan eighty billion dollars worth of uh, right. armaments. I know. You know. It seems like doesn't today. Make sense. No. 
It seems like today, guys, everything's upside down. I was telling Tom earlier, my mother used to make an upside down cake. Remember yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You bake the cake and turn it upside yeah. down. That's yeah. the way it seems things are I today. Have that so with some it's got it's got to end though. You know, uh, and what next? A new high school? And uh, how old is this school here? Oh no, that study is already uh, is already in the works. I just want to make an analogy. All the schools in Boston are around a hundred years old. Yeah, I remember okay. oh, like Don Boston English, uh, Don Bosco, all those oh, schools. Don I don't Bosco know if they're closed. still open or the closed. They're, they're, but they're still open. BC the High's an old school. The junior sure high is. school that I went to, the Washington Irving Junior High School in Rosendale, okay, is still open and still functioning at a high level. Right. And it's 100 years old. Yeah, I, I think it's, it's more the quality of teaching and the students, what they want to get out of. Like I said, I went to a school, my high I think school. I the big factor is accountability. Right. There is no accountability yeah. across the board. Right. You know, you question, How, right. you question now, the workmanship and the in the uh, the workmanship of the maintenance of the building. So I say, who can we hold accountable for that? Right. Now, did they eliminate Nobody. the MCAS scores? I heard the MCAS. I don't think tank. they have them anymore. Yeah, right? they did. They sent the but aren't they going to eliminate that? Now it's just like a pass fail. Well, that's oh, talk that's, here in uh, here in Walpole. They want to uh, do. That's just talk, from what I understand. They want to have a pass fail right. grading system, and the elimination of NCAS is being discussed. And right. the valedictorian is gone. Valedictorian's gone. Okay. National, the National Honor Society. The ability is gone. to so the they ability don't recognize to, the students for these achievements anymore. The no. ability for a National Honor Society student to show their excellence has has been wiped out. Unbelievable. It's just unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't a National you Honor Society. You know, a lot Society of a student. lot of people are now working out of their homes too, and right. it, it, like you said, it cuts down on. Tidiness, going to work, it cuts down on sickness, right. working with your coworkers, right. cuts down on accidents, going snow back and days. forth, snow days. Right. So maybe that is the way of the future, I like think the, the future Jetsons. Is. Right. You know. So before we wrap up, gentlemen, is there anything else you'd like to discuss about the vote coming up? I just want everybody to get out and vote. That's, mm -hmm. That'd be uh, that'd be win-win right there alone right. to get people right. out. I right. mean, all these primaries and all over. It's not only in this town, but Brockton. They had their primary. They had nine percent of the nine. people vote. <laughs> that's, that's Fifty-six hundred people voted out of forty-six thousand registered voters. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It's just mind-boggling to me. I don't know. I don't know what's going on out there. I can remember when I was growing up in Roslindale. When it came time to vote. I was working at the polls. Yeah. Okay. As soon as I got able to vote, okay. I remember putting up uh, a 16 foot sign on the side of my father's house. My father didn't know about it. He right. came home, <laughs> coming out of his mind. Was that for John right. F. Kennedy? No, it wasn't. It was for a local law. Uh, I mean, it's your patriotic duty to vote. Yeah. We have, fortunately, in our country, you have freedom, democracy, right? Look at all the bloodshed for the soldiers, the brave soldiers That's that right. died fighting for our freedom and democracy, right. and people just take it for advantage. By the way, I want to thank you both, uh, you gentlemen, for serving diligently on the Republican Town Committee. Vic, you were chairman for how many years? Over six. Over six, and Tom, you were the vice chair. Vice and chairman. And you both recently stepped down yes. due to personal reasons. Yep. And uh, we have Grace. Uh, Gavastos. Gerardo Lincoln, Lincoln that uh, yeah. took your place. Yeah. She's a great person. Okay. I think uh, Tim Hampton might be the vice, isn't he? Uh, Tim Hampton is. Uh, right. And uh, we, we've got uh, uh, a couple of new folks, uh, uh, Bob Damish. Right. Uh, and uh, uh, I, went, I went to the last meeting and it was very energetic. There's a lot of new people there. Uh, right. We had like 10 or 12 new people. Good. I wish you both the best of luck in all future endeavors. Now, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you any uh, future political uh, aspirations. I know, Tom, you've run several times for Select Board. Right. But you keep your options open. I will keep my options open, but, you know, it's, it's clear and evident that I'm not a politician. Okay? When neither you run, was, neither when you was run, Donald Trump. When my platform is transparency accountability and responsible spending and it just doesn't resonate 
you know, I got to step well, back. Maybe you're uh, seeking the wrong office. Maybe you should run for president. Look yeah. at Trump. He never held political office, and he obtained the highest free world position, or perhaps the whole world, president of the United right. States. That's mind-boggling to me that he never held political office, and he went right to the top. I right think, to the and top. I think he'll be back again, too. Could be. And Vic, how about yourself, political I'm going to uh, uh, just relax. Going to relax. <laughs> and same with me. I did get elected, uh, as you recall, to the Tax Assessors Board, one of three members, a three-year term. And we have a meeting coming up in uh, November where we set the tax factor between industrial, residential, mm -hmm. commercial, open space, which is land, raw land. And uh, it'd be interesting because there some communities have what they call a, a residential and small business tax exemption. Mm -hmm. The way that works uh, with the Department of Revenue, you get all the assessed values in the town and you hit a certain average or an amount and anyone that falls below that amount, I believe in Walpole, it's about 469000 So if you pass the residential tax exemption, people whose homes are valued under that would get a small tax break, and the burden would shift to the people whose homes are assessed above that. Mm -hmm. I surmise it works the same way for small businesses, you know, to, to help people that of lesser income. That? Uh, no, it's it's you set if you have to vote on, it, but it's the select board, by the way, who has the final vote on everything. Oh, well, so we, we know how that's going to. Yeah, go. the tax assessors recommend to the select board, mm -hmm. and then the select board votes on that. Right. They vote on the tax factor and also on um, if you, you wanna, did have you, a baby. You want to ask predictions on that one? Right, and I think we have. <laughs> I think we have about uh, the last, the best of my recollection, we have about a million and a half left what they call a uh, capital outlay account. That's for abatements for people that come forward. And anyone can file an abatement. If you think your property's overvalued, you can come in an abatement. By the way, Department of Revenue says every 10 years, all properties has to be uh, reassessed. They actually use a drone now, believe it or not. So if you put in a swimming pool, really, and you didn't put in a, a permit, the drones fly overhead. They're taking pictures constantly of your property. So I think 80, 80 or 90 percent of the homes have already been assessed in that 10-year time frame in, in Walpole. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens with all these businesses coming and asking for the abatements because of COVID. I think that million and a half capital outlay account will be diminished very quickly. Oh, yeah. Hmm. But I'm always advocating for a residential tax break between commercial because when you stop and think about it, the individuals that are penalized the most are the individual homeowners. Because if you're a multifamily, a landlord, and you own uh, investment properties, what's going to happen if your taxes go up? You're going to pass it on to the tenant, yeah, unless they have rent control, right? You're going to pass it on to them. If you're a business, what are you going to do? Pass it on. You're going to hike up to the end consumer your price, right? right. You're in business. November 1st. But what can, industry, the, what can the residential yeah. tax owner write off? Yeah. I mean, you think they cut down on your uh, tax exemptions on your, your uh, federal income tax as far as real estate taxes go yeah. to a certain amount. Right. Well, gentlemen, I thank you for coming on the show. It was an interesting topic. And uh, once again, you viewers out there, it's a key vote next Tuesday, November 2nd. The polls are open from 8 to 8, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. If you want to That's sign, you can see Tom Brown. A Vic Center. You want to put a sign up? You only have a few days left. And until the next outside view, you be safe out there and make your vote count. Gentlemen, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you, Dick. Thanks for having us. And uh, it's it. been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.